Aquarian friends, and welcome to your forecast for 2021 and Aquarius. Woo! It's time. It is time to get into the work, isn't it? Saturn, Jupiter in your sign, Uranus, your ruling planet in Taurus, the space and the place of your comfort, your home, your emotional foundations, the shake up, the maturity, the come to the next level, the raise, the vibration is so real this year. And I am here for it. And I am here for you. Capricorn spent a couple years doing some good growth and now it's your turn. And what's exciting about this is this is the next chapter for you. This is the next place place you get to go. Saturn's not coming around here to get all serious in your face for no reason. It's to take you to this next level, this next place of maturity where self-discipline, where bringing some things into a tighter boundary, even though that is not your thing, really allows you to expand and stretch those arms and have a level of freedom that only self-discipline can bring. And I am so excited to see who you become as this transition is happening and I'm looking forward to walking with you every week and every month as the becoming and the shifting and the changing and the work is happening. Now 2020 some things had to fall apart come apart of course but in 2021 we get to see what the new norm is and work within that and this place of innovation but mature innovation is right up your alley so your ability to do the becoming this year is absolutely absolutely abundant but it does mean that you have to shake and break free from some things that have been home they've been rooted in it's grounded maybe even some things of the family um, places that you've been too anchored it's time to adjust that anchoring so that you can actually have this level up of your vibration and live in that way that is that next chapter kind of more free um, energy that's available to you now this year we're going to see the big ticket item is that Saturn and Uranus your ruling planet are are going to Saturn in your sign Uranus your ruling planet are going to square against each other and globally this is huge but when we pull that down into a personal bite-sized piece what this also means is that the clash between Aquarius you the first house your personality your body how you show up in the world and your fourth house home family real estate property the past it's like it's smushing you in between there and it's bringing a little bit of unpredictable energy but ultimately it's saying break free from here why are we stagnant in this energy why what do we need to change what do we need to adjust where do I need to take the more mature role even within my family that allows me to actually be free it doesn't seem like by taking on more responsibility I would be free but that may actually be the case of some things that happen for you this year so as these push in to this energy and square this year I'm going to just tell you please do not resist to the best of your ability the changes that are trying to be made here instead be that innovative beautiful Aquarian energy that you are shuck and jive and adapt and go with it because it is really trying to bring you that level of freedom that I think is absolutely acquired as this square comes against this is also going to be with Saturn in your energy I think the question of in your family is there a space, place, and time that you are taking on too much responsibility or is somebody taking on too much responsibility of you? And this is going to bring an independence to that as well. But it certainly seems like a, in some way, it's like a shakeup or a, um, a change of the roles within your family unit or within the structures of what you consider to be the thing that makes you secure. Really an interesting energy. Now, as we're getting into this year as well, we're going to see Mercury taking a retrograde out of the water signs like we've had for the last couple of years and in the air sign and you're an air sign. So you're going to be getting actually the first Mercury retrograde, which happens January 30th. It will be in your sign. So this is thinking the mind. You're rethinking, recreating, revising, re-editing yourself. How are you showing up? Where do you need to go back over things um, from your past and look at what part and what portion did you play? in that I also think during this particular Mercury retrograde you've got Saturn and Jupiter over here as well you might be going okay in a very real way what am I really to do to remake myself 
right? What am I willing to allow my, my mind and my thinking to go in a different direction and be matured under the helpers of Saturn and Jupiter? Now, the next um, retrograde we're going to experience will be in May, and that will be in the energy of Gemini, so lighting up your fifth house space. We will also see the last one happening in September in Libra in that ninth house space. So I'll cover those more in depth as we get closer into those months. But just remember, too, that the Saturn-Uranus square, as it comes together, is going to be February, June, and December. And these are going to be big times, big shifts. Don't push and resist those changes, okay? May 13th, we're going to welcome Jupiter into the energy of Pisces between May and July. So this is just a short little snippet. So we see what's going on over here, but this is going to light up the second house space for you. So Jupiter in Pisces, one of the things that I think of here for your second house energy is an opportunity. Jupiter is a benefic. He likes to bring opportunities to you, but you have to do something with it. Jupiter will bring that opportunity to make money or opportunity to see your self-esteem rise, your value rise, or have an expansion of your value, but he just drops it at the front door. You've got to get in the car. You know what I'm saying? So just remember, if there are opportunities available, and they maybe even come out of nowhere, Pisces energy, between Jupiter and Pisces, they know no boundaries as to where they are pulling from. So if an opportunity presents itself, say yes. Just say yes. What do you have to, uh, what do you have to lose by saying yes to it? Now, the only thing I will tell you is please be mindful with your money this year. You've got the big dogs on you. They're reshaping you, resetting you. So with Jupiter and Pisces and no bounds, you also don't want to just be throwing your money out there to the best of your ability. And you don't want to take on too many things that will require you to give them your money. So not too many bills this year. But I ultimately love the way that this energy allows you to be creative and showcase um, your self-esteem through this Piscean energy. So I look forward to seeing what opportunities Jupiter brings to that table for you. Now, Jupiter is also going to be the ruling planet of a couple of the eclipses we have as we start eclipse season. May 26th, we're going to have an eclipse at 5 degrees of Sagittarius, and December 4th, we will have a solar eclipse at 12 degrees of Sagittarius. Ruling planet Jupiter over the Sagittarian energy, since both of these are happening in your 11th house, I literally think that Jupiter provides you an opportunity to make new friends, to expand your social circle, to the eclipses will say adjust the tribe adjust the friends adjust our long-range vision we need to course correct here uh, in something and then be prepared to begin something new but Jupiter's like cool I'm going to show you valuable friends I'm going to give you valuable opportunities I'm going to surround you this year Aquarius while you're growing and changing and just you know ushering in a new era people who can support you but I'm also at this eclipse energies going to ask you to develop something big develop in a way that it's like you know chase that skyscraper see what else is up there maybe expand beyond where you've ever seen your fingertips touch and just know that it's out there and available for you so I think that these eclipses as they course correct the 11th house of friendships and groups and acquaintances and your long-range plans and your technology you're definitely set on the course of taking advantage of the opportunities that Jupiter is trying to set up for you you. Now, June 10th, we're going to see a solar eclipse happening at 19 degrees of Gemini. This will be in your fifth house space. Now, as this solar eclipse is happening, we are also having Mercury, the ruling planet of this eclipse, retrograde here in this particular area. So it makes me think you're going back to children or, oh, yes, Aquarius, you're going back to passion passion, joy, there's a play, there's a self-expression like, Aquarius, where have you been? How come you didn't say that earlier? You're going back to it and you're going back to this passion, this play, this movement that's available to you, this idea that you had of if I could do this and, and do this for the rest of my life, I would just really be happy. Of course, there is always during a Mercury retrograde combined with an eclipse, an opportunity for ex-lovers, ex-romance, children that maybe we lost connection with, including our own inner child, down to children that we have that you've lost connection with, to come back into your life and this area gets to be a review. But I also wonder too if this truly in the dive into the passion, if this doesn't set you on course with the opportunities that Jupiter's trying to bring in for you at that social level as well, where it's like you really get to tell your story in some way, shape, or form. I love that energy for you at these eclipses, but definitely no. 
the friendship zone and the what does Aquarius have to offer as its own special sauce is going to have an adjustment as well. Now, as we get to November 19th, we see a lunar eclipse happening at 27 degrees of Taurus. This is going to be in the fourth house zone, home, family, real estate, property, your parents. And remember, I told you in the beginning of the video, I think as Saturn and Jupiter are traveling through your sign, you're upping your responsibility. So at this eclipse, I'm wondering if, you know, do you have to take care of a parent or you have to take a different role in the family but you have to make sure the boundaries around you and what you're doing with your family are very healthy so that you don't take on the opportunity to take on all of the uh, work and the opportunity right but this could definitely create a shift here this also could be yes a relocation you're moving you're moving and relocating things within your house so that it works a little bit better but I'm thinking with Uranus also being in the energy of Taurus even though it's too far away from this eclipse there could be a surprise change in that fourth house domestic zone for you that you didn't necessarily plan or see coming so you just have to pivot and and jive with it so that you can make the adjustments you need to make here but think about this how you handle your resources around home is going to be the question at this particular eclipse okay then Ju december 4th we see that 12 degree sagittarian eclipse happening in the 11th house again so now this is where we begin the new tribe we begin the new long-range vision for your life in that 11th house and the new friends get the opportunity to come in and the ones that don't align you're like oh hey you guys gotta go nothing's wrong we're just not on the same alignment anymore so if you lose some friends this year or you lose Lose some social groups I wouldn't be too worried about it unless you lose them because you're putting yourself in a position of isolation on purpose okay now as we get to December 19th we're gonna see Venus taking a retrograde in the energy of Capricorn now Venus retrograde first of all is about value it's about money it's about relationships it's about the level of harmony that is available because Venus is our smaller benefic planet in the energy of Capricorn it's the question of do I have What's the value of how I'm getting things done? What's the value of how I'm achieving? What's the value in this area of my healing, of my spiritual awakening? What's the value of my commitments to my spiritual life, to my creativity, to my elderly, to my animals, right? You're reviewing the value of all of that. Now, I will tell you during a Venus retrograde in your 12th house, if you wanted to go on a spiritual retreat, if you wanted to do a self-induced like isolation, solitude detox, I think that that's actually a very good energy. Just make sure you peek your eyes out every here and there so we know that you are okay. But taking the time to breathe and to be and to reground, especially as Saturn and Jupiter have stepped into your sign to really mature you, crystallize some things and master some lessons for you. If you need a break, Aquarius, please take it and don't be surprised if things from the past present themselves at that time for you to see if they still have value to help you achieve to relook at your self-esteem around your spiritual life around your creative gifts and talents as well now as we end the year on december 29th jupiter will officially move into pisces for that one year stay to really work through that energy and i want you to flash back between may and july what did you learn with that snippet and sneak peek of jupiter being in pisces what did you see over there what did you see around your money what did you see around your value you know for some people truly with jupiter and pisces your money might have just disappeared you're like where did my money go what happened it's out there in the unknown boundaries so if you saw that happen or happening rein it in rein it in because jupiter will take that thing and run he's very comfortable in the energy of pisces but instead i think something we can also look at with jupiter in this area is spiritualizing your money you become jupiter becomes this available guardian angel to your esteem to the things that you value to your income to your passive income it provides again those opportunities to use your creative talents or to make money in some way that is actually quite spiritualized that comes from a very creative place you tapped back into your passion and your joy now is this where jupiter drops that opportunity through 2022 for you to actually make money with that thing or to actually have money money could come to you through from the ethers as well so i'll be interested to see who that is who you just have money that also kind of comes in but maybe that's a stream of passive income that you've established or you've set up or something like that so let me know how it goes this year, Aquarius. It's a big year for you. It's a big couple 
years for you. Not only because you're the energy ushering in something completely new, but truly because Saturn is in your sign. So whether this is your sun, your moon, or your rising, that area for you is being pushed on. It is being crystallized. And Saturn is saying, walk with me because I want us to grow. I want to take you to the next level. So don't fight Saturn. Go with the flow, the fear, the doubt. All of these things are just the part of the process of growing. It's part of that plant getting all the way up there and shining its big leaves out, okay? Saturn is really quite trustworthy despite what it feels like sometimes, but this is definitely the next chapter of your life, Aquarius, and I can't wait to see what happens for you. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Please let me know how it's manifesting for you, no matter when you're listening to this video throughout 2021, in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the eat and greets. I'll see you on Patreon, the podcast, Facebook, Instagram, all the places I can see you. I look forward to seeing you, Aquarius. Bye, everyone.